Now, if you're anywhere near my vintage or older, you know that Russell Morris is the real thing, an absolute legend of Australian music, with hits like The Real Thing, Sweet Sweet Love and On the Wings of an Eagle. His career started in the 1960s. It reached dizzying heights in the 1970s, and he's still going strong at 75, taking a show around the country that showcases his incredible repertoire with full orchestral backing. Terrific stuff. The show is called The Real Thing, and when I spoke with Russell, I noted that with a 54-piece orchestra, orchestra backing a 10-person band, he's certainly not mucking around. No, not mucking around it. Uh, it was a serious thing for me. Uh, the biggest band I've ever had prior to that, I think, was probably seven maybe <laughs> so it was it was really uh, the my description is I felt like I was strapped to the front of an express train yeah it's it must be wonderful because you're reinterpreting these hits they're songs you've been playing for many many decades and the audiences have heard them for many many decades but you've got this musical arrangement before them as you say you've got all this power behind you David Hertzfeld are doing the arrangements for you give us a, a sense of what it feels like to to reinterpret your songs this way it was a great honour and I was so, so honoured that David could do it because he is, he, he is a certified genius. He's been nominated for two uh, Academy Awards. He's done all John Farnham stuff and uh, when he said, listen, I'd love to do it, uh, the first couple of arrangements he sent me, I just could not believe. They were just phenomenal. So I was really looking forward to it and it's... Uh, it's an amazing feeling. It's, it's a bit scary because unlike working with my band, which is usually a four-piece band, if I make a mistake, we can just coast along the band will pick it up. But with an orchestra, it's like trying to catch the Queen Mary down at the dock. If the boat sail, forget it. You, don't, you can't find your berth. <laughs> Russell, you've been such a big part of the Australian music scene for so long, you know, starting off in the 60s. And someone like me, I've grown up hearing your music all the way along. Tell us about the, the passion, I suppose, that drives you to do this. You're, you're in your 70s now. You could be excused for sitting on your porch with a guitar, but instead you're, you're taking on this massive tour, taking this music to the, to the whole country. Well, the music business is a funny one. You're either the uh, rooster or the feather duster. And I've been the feather duster a few times. There are times when nothing was working and then all of a sudden I came out and did some blues albums which won arias and were platinum selling albums. So that gave me another lift. And then uh, I was almost ready to think, oh, I'll just do a few more shows. And then this, this came along and it's just been phenomenal and didn't know it would would be as big as it is and one of the stage producers he said well what songs do you want to do and I said I don't know I've got so many songs I can't choose so I gave him my whole catalogue and he chose songs out of the catalogue and some of them are very new ones which have only been recently done and of course the old hits as well so it's 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 a sort of an anthology of everything once I get up on stage. Well, speaking of those old hits, I just want to show a little snippet of two of your biggest hits uh, as performed with this new show. of an eagle and the real thing Russell now you wrote on the wings of an eagle I think the real thing uh, was written by Johnny Young obviously you interpreted it tell us uh, uh, these are Aussie classics these will live forever what, how does that sit on your shoulders knowing that so many generations are familiar with these songs and, and they are such a key part of the Australian music tradition it's, it's an incredible honour and it's also a, a fair bit of luck too. You just don't know what serendipity is going to come along when you record a song. 
Um, I remember when I wrote Sweet Sweet Love, which became a big hit, I played it to John Farnham and I said, John, would you like to record it? And he said, listen, I love the song. He said, but it takes too long to get to the chorus. I don't think it'll be a hit. And I was so so grateful in the end he didn't do it because it gave me one more hit. And I remember as last time we were speaking, we were talking about it, and he said, I wish I had have done it. And I said, John, I would have been so rapt to hear you sing it. I would have loved to have heard him sing that song. But uh, it gave me one more hit, which was great. So you just don't know. You write a song and people either love it or they hate it. And I've, I've had many songs that I've recorded that I thought that would be the best thing I'd done. And people don't seem to embrace it. So it's, it's an odd, it's an odd uh, uh, career to be in. Now, you mentioned you've been getting into the blues in uh, recent decades and you've won awards for your songwriting, some of the blues material you've churned out over the past couple of decades. I want to just play a, a little sample of one song, Sander Cam, where you're actually honouring your father's war service in Borneo. Have a listen. Six months around, every night, every day. McWilliams, Morrison, Minton, you and Willie got away into the jungle from the Santa can that did run and hide. Now that is a seriously a bluesy, Russell. It could almost be Lead Belly himself. But tell me about how important it is to tell stories like that in song, the story of your own father and his colleagues and their sacrifice during the war. Yeah, well, they were on that hideous Sandakan march. I won't go into it. People can read about it. Um, very few survived that march. My father was lucky. He survived with four others, although he died shortly after they repatriated him because he, he was recaptured and then sent to another Sterner prison And uh, after the war. And they were on the run for six months in the jungle. And uh, it's very important to carry our because we carry that DNA. I have to say, before I went on stage, and I'm not just saying this now because you've asked me the question, before I went on stage in Melbourne, I virtually spoke to myself and to the DNA memory in me, and I said, uh, Grandma, Grandpa, I'm Grandma, Grandpa on both sides, Mother, Dad, you're all with me tonight. We're one. We're going on stage tonight. This is where we're standing at this moment. My children will take our DNA on, so... Please be with me. And that's how it feels. It's not me, it's them. It's a collective combination of everybody prior to me that brings you to a certain point in your life. And uh, hopefully you're going to be gratified by it. And I, I was very gratified. Yeah, well, Russell, you certainly are the real thing. The show is the real thing, getting rave reviews. And congratulations on taking it uh, around the country. Good luck and thanks for joining us. Oh, Chris, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. And thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, he did this show for what was going to be a one-off. It got fantastic reviews and a lot of interest, so now it's going national. The tour starts this month in Melbourne, followed by Crown in Perth, then the Festival Theatre in Adelaide, the Sydney Opera House in November and Brisbane in December. So for tickets and dates, go to russellmorris.com. What a pleasure it was to speak to that living legend of Australian music.